Hey there everybody and welcome. This is the last tutorial of this series and I'm really glad to be here right now. So in this tutorial, we're going to be hosting the game on the VPS just so that players from around the world can come join and play with everybody, I guess. So before we begin, I want you to just go over here to DigitalOcean and I want you to create an account. So this is actually the service that we're going to be using for our VPS. Um, we're going to be creating our VPS here and they give you $300 credit when you just sign up. So you can go over to the link in the description, sign up, get your $100 credit and try this out for free. And one bug when, that I've seen when you're trying to sign up is um, don't try to sign up from Google or from GitHub. Just try um, putting your email and password there um, and sign up. And don't worry, when you try to sign up, they're going to ask you for your payment details through PayPal or your card. Just put it in, they're not going to debit it as long as you don't actually spend money on the server. So I'm going to give you like three seconds so that you can go create your account and come back. So now to begin, we're going to go over here um when you just create your account this is what you're going to be seeing this is going to be your default i think the name will be droplets whatever it is so um but this is exactly what you're going to be seeing so first off we're going to click create and over here we're going to click droplets so when you do that you're going to see create droplets choose an image and all that stuff so we're going to leave it as ubuntu i'm going to leave it as 20.0.4 and here you see choose a plan you can choose the shared cpu general purpose cpu optimized you can actually go for the um, craziest one right now because you're going to be using your free dollar credits i guess um but whatever i'm going to just go to basic um this shared cpu and i'm going to click this 14 dollar one i guess or you can go for this one since it has two intel cpus just if you're doing this for production purposes just um, go for the one that is best so over here you see add block storage we're not going to add that we don't have any databases and all that I'm going to choose Amsterdam for my country because I don't know why not. And yeah, that's it. Password, you're going to choose a password. I actually like using one particular password because it fits all these criteria inside here. So I'm just going to paste it. And you can see password must be this long. Um, just make a password to fit this criteria. And um, make sure you remember that password because we're going to be using it later on. The next thing is select additional options. You can select to enable backups. This is just going to be um, backup the servers, data, monitoring, all these things. Um, this one is free, IPv6. We're not going to be using IPv6. We're just going to leave all these things blank. And over here, how many droplets? We only want one. And we can just choose a host name. Um, in this case, I'm just going to choose multiplayer. Or let's just say Godot multiplayer. So yeah, here um, you can choose tags. We're just going to leave that blank. We don't actually need tags. And the tags are just so that um, in case you have like mini droplets, you can shuffle through um, really easily. So we're going to select the project, which is the droplets project. We're going to click create. As you can see, it's creating our server here. 2 gigs, 60 gigs space um, in the disk. And we're just going to wait for this to finish. So yeah, we were done with that. As you can see now, our server has been created and it has an IP address. We're going to be using this later on. But before we go on, you will have to download FileZilla. So FileZilla is basically what we're going to use to transport our game project or our server um, server file to, this, to the main server here, the computer. So go ahead and download FileZilla. Go to filezillaproject.org slash download.php. You're going to see for Windows, you're going to see for um, Mac OS down here, Linux, whatever operating system you're on. And get it also just to be clear make sure you get filezilla clients please don't go get any filezilla server because you won't be able to follow along so after this we're going to go over to our server our godot server here i'm going to export it so we go over to projects export and as you can see we have a linux already in here if you are not seeing that just click add and click linux 11 and we're just going to leave all these values default and make sure you don't click this embed pack because what well, is the part is the pck file we're going to be using and before we continue, I want you to take note of something. I want you to take note of the current version of Godot you are using. For me, I'm currently using Godot 3.2.3, if I'm not wrong here. Um, if you want to check, you go over to help, about, and you're going to see it here. Godot engine 3.2.3. So yeah, take note of the Godot you're going to you're using to export this because we're going to be using it later on when we try to deploy the server. So we'll go back to project, export, and... We're going to click this and just going to export the project and i'm going to export it over here to multiplayer game i'm just going to export it here so click save it's going to take a couple of seconds and we're done 
So if I go back to that folder here, you're going to see server.x86 um, underscore 64 and pck. Actually, we're not going to be using this other one. It's the pck file we need, as I said before. So now I assume your filezilla has finished downloading. So we're just going to go fire it up. So when filezilla is up, um, this is basically how it look. It may not look like this. I'm kind of using an old version because I don't know. I don't like trying new things. But anyways, um, when your filezilla is up, it's going to look like this. So we're just going to navigate to that folder that we saved that um, server that we just exported. So mine is in desktop and it's in multiplayer game. This is it. And these are the two files down here. So now we're going to be connecting to this um, DigitalOcean server that we just created. So we'll go over here, hover around this um, IP address, click copy, and go back to FileZilla. We're going to click this open site manager. And over here, my site, you're just going to click new site. When actually, this is not actually a site, but just click new site. We can rename this to Godot. And we'll go over here to protocol, choose SFTP, and the host is going to be the IP address we just copied. We're going to leave the port empty. And the password is going to be that password that you set while creating this server. So remember I told you that you need that password. Now this is the time. We're also going to use it again later on. But you're going to paste in that password here. So over here for the user, we're just going to use root. And we're going to click OK. Then we go over back here. And if you click this drop down, you're going to see Godot. We're going to click that. And it's going to try to connect. As you can see, it's going to try to connect with this fingerprint, all this stuff. Just click OK. And as you can see, it connected, retrieving the directory. And here it is. This is our root, this is our server that we created on DigitalOcean. So now we're going to be sending the server.pck file. As you can see, it's now inside there. So basically, what I just did is just drag and drop, basic drag and drop. It's just upload the file to the server. That's actually everything we need Fazilla for. Um, I'm sorry if it was a pain in the ass to download, but whatever. So now it's time to log into the server and do some cool command prompt stuff. So we're going to close FileZilla and we'll get to open Windows Terminal. You can open Terminal, you can open command prompt, whatever you want. But I'm going to be using Terminal in this case. So now I'm opening here my Terminal and this is where we're going to be doing the remaining stuff. Um, before this, I just want to make reference to this website. This is, this is actually where I found how to host get servers for Godot. Kudos to Coding Kaiju. This is an amazing article. And you also check it out in the description below. So we're going to be connecting via SSH. So first off, we're going to type in SSH. I will say root at that IP address of the server. So we enter on that. And it's going to say the authenticity of the host, blah, 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 can be established. Fingerprint, plenty of weird stuff. Um, we're just going to say yes anyways. And now they're going to be asking for the password. Remember that password we set when we were creating the server? That's the password we need here. So go ahead and copy that in. If you type in the password, they're actually not going to show it. So um, just use your blind mind, I guess, and just type it in. Um, if you hit enter, if the password is correct, you'll be successfully connected. As you can see, root at Godot Multiplayer. And this was that name we set when we were creating the server itself. Here it is. So if you have gotten to this point, trust me, you're going to finish this tutorial with ease. So over here, I can just type ls and you're going to see server.pck. So now the next thing is we're going to be downloading the Godot headless server, um, headless Linux server. And we're going to download it through the terminal. So I'm going to paste in this um, in the description so you can go ahead and copy this same command. Um, basically, it's wget, and this is actually where the server is stored. Remember when I said um, you should take note of your Godot version? Yeah, this is why. As you can see here, 3.2.3, just change that to your version. And over here, Godot v. 3.2.3 also change that to your version that you're using every other thing can remain the same way i'm gonna go ahead and download it and what does this say command get not found oh sorry 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 before this we we're meant to do sudo update oh yeah sorry i just tried to wrap my head around the error and what we we're meant to do is sudo apt update basically is to update the linux server i guess next up we're going to be downloading godot headless server version so for that, I'm just going to paste in this command, wget, um, and this is basically going to download that Godot headless server version. So if we hit enter on this, you'll see it's going to download it a couple of seconds, about 18 MB per second. That was crazy. So we're done with that. So as you can see, we downloaded a zip file. If we type ls, then we can see the file we just downloaded, and it's a zip file. Before we can extract this, we have to install something. And 
to do that we'll just do sudo apt install unzip as you can see it installs it really quickly and now we can go ahead and just unzip that good file. all these commands will be in the description below so don't panic and now for the finale if we click if we type ls we're going to see that we, um, we successfully extracted it so now we're going to run the server file as you can see godot v 3.2.3 table linux server dot 64 dash dash main dash pack fps server dot ps dot pck this is actually meant to be server this is the name of your server so yeah so now moment of truth if we hit enter wow you're gonna see a lot of errors so now these errors don't actually matter in my opinion because um when i searched online about the errors they said that it doesn't really matter anyways as you can see server created has been printed successfully and now in order to connect to our server from the client go over to our game script here go over to script um that's server.gd over here where we put 127.0.0.1 instead of connecting to that now we connect to a real ip address so now if we go back to our game and we click run moment of truth if we click join game yeah we are in so if this doesn't work for you i want to just tell you um some problems as you can see here player connected so if this doesn't work for you make sure you are running the same version of godot as the one that you exported the server in make sure because i have like seven versions of godot also and most of the time i run it um, on different godots and i've always had that problem so make sure that you're running the, the same godot version so that i can connect so now i'm just going to create another godot instance so that you can, you can see people um working in the scene and all that if you join game on this side you can see the other guy got spawned and if you look closely you're going to see some latency and that's actually because we are no more on our local machine now we are on a server so if we move you can you can see a bit of lag there because my internet is not that fast but it's fast enough though anyways as you can see i'm just going to try to kill this guy as you can see responding in three seconds everything is working basically everything is working but wait, there's actually one last thing we haven't done. If you go over here back to the command line and we close it. As you can see, we are, I'm trying to shoot, I can't shoot. Um, that's because I'm disconnected from the server. So closing the command line surprisingly disconnects you from the server. So we are going to have to fix that. As you can see, we have gone back to the home page because the client now knows that we're disconnected. So I'm going to open up terminal back. I'm going to log in. And instead of running it like this, um, if you want to get out of, if you want to stop this process, you can just click Ctrl C. But instead of running it like this, I want to run it in the environment so that even after I close this terminal, it's still going to run. So we're going to be using no hop for this. So no hop is built into the Linux, so you don't have to install it or anything. So just put no hop in front of the run statements, click enter, and you're going to see no hop ignoring output inputs and appending output to no the out that is basically just going to append all the errors to no the out if you want to see that error um, we can just close this and do nano no hope the out and you can see all the errors and remember it's just like those errors that were there before then we're going to use ctrl x and exit out of that come back and run the no hop again as you can see same output then if we close this we can go ahead run our client join game and as you can see he joins the game also run another instance and as you can see join game yeah so everything is updating really nicely even after i've closed the terminal because it is now running that file in the environment so yeah i think that's all for this tutorial I've, i'm really thankful to all of you that have watched this tutorial series from the beginning it means a lot to me and i really thank you for watching this video even if this is the only video you have watched doing youtube is a passion for me and i really love it thanks again to you guys thanks for watching see you guys next time smash subscribe and goodbye